Hi. I read a novel by Ladislav, Ladislav Klima. He is a Czech author, and the novel is called The Sufferings of Prince Sternenhawk. I borrowed the book from the Link Plus library, and I took a lot of notes. And I want to return the book to the library, but before I do, I want to um, talk about how interesting the novel was. Um, one of the things that I found in the book that I thought worth noting was the author in the disguise of the main character. It's hard for me to believe that the main character does not share the author's point of view here, but it is, to be honest and to be clear, it is said in the voice and the mind of the character, Prince Sternenhawk, Helmut, that, quote, everything having to do with humanity is dung, Unquote. That's on page 121 of the hardback. He also writes, uh, or says, on page 121, the main character says, The whole of waking life is born of omni-idiocy. I would actually limit that myself and say, the whole of working life is born of omni-idiocy, but I see his point because life is full of idiots and idiocy. It's just more obvious at work. On page 124, there's an observation by the main character about dreams, and he says, every dream is masochistic. I think that that particular statement is a universal, it's a good generalization. On page 169, the, uh, the, the main character refers to humanity as chiropterin, bat-like. And, um, Yes, on page 165, there's a kind of sexual reference where uh, the main character is talking about <clears throat> his having the hots for uh, his own wife, but who is now a ghostly demon who is a hellcat from hell. Nonetheless, he still has the hots for her. And he says, even if I, what have you, were aflame with longing for her. And then, at one point, I thought it was kind of amusing, the description. He, the uh, main character, Prince Sternenhawk, Helmut, gives uh, his wife, uh, as he sees her sitting uh, in a um, gazebo, or near a gazebo, and that she looked like a winter, no, I'm sorry, she looked like a water goblin suffering from jaundice. That's on page 146. And then, equally amusing, I thought, in a, you know, black humorous way, on page 150, he says to his wife, the ghost, I killed you once, girl. What's to prevent me from killing you again? Um... I like this sentence, uh, it's by Prince um, Sternenhawk in his diary. I am as clear-sighted as a somnambulist. Um, on page 171 he refers to um, 
something being muddled and transcendentally lucid at the same time. Muddled and transcendentally lucid. Uh, I think that's kind of a contradiction speak for his ability to see multiple levels from dream to reality, and then reality as a dream to lucidity through the dream about reality. Uh, it's both muddled and transcendental. Uh, I never understood what the word Slivovitz was. S-L-I-V-O-V-I-T-Z. Slivovitz. It's referenced on page 165, and I have to look that up. And, um, well, I think I pretty much said everything I wanted to say from my notes. Um, there is, a, on page 113, there's a passage I thought was just beautifully written, not for its lyricism, although it is lyric, but for its simplicity, because it is, it is simple like only a Czech writer can write in terms of childlike simplicity. Seven in the morning, my bedroom windows are open, the broad gardens spread out beneath them. Outside all is radiance and festivity and laughter. Although it is early in both the morning and the spring, an almost summery wind comes streaming toward me from the outdoors, and the laughing sun, low until now, burns warmly. The scent of apricot and cherry blossoms wafts toward me like the mystical greetings of enchanting wind spirits. The lake of trees below me cries noisily with the bright songs of innumerable small birds. The little clouds in the sky smile down upon me. How gladly I would fly up to you, my silver golden little doves, and travel through the timeless blue wilderness on your little backs. I can't sit at home any longer, oh, to soar with Uhlenberg and Moltke up into nature. And then I think it's uh, 116, I referenced another passage. I think it's just the language here that I thought was interesting. Uh, it says, um, well, I'll tell you all about it, only I must be careful not to, not to jump over the box of matches there, or better said, not to get my ideas mixed up. You know, it seems to me that I'm going to, I'm going a little crazy, but that will pass, won't it? Everything passes. Even a goat's got to kick the bucket sometime. And just so you know, she would not have come if I had shouted, you know what, in time. You know what is a reference to? Up my arse, or jump up my arse. It was his magical phrase to ward off his ghostly wife's appearance, or reappearance. But if you had seen her in those men's clothes, a short coat, tight-fitting, thin green trousers, hot damn, you should have seen that tummy of hers and her rear end beneath them. I thought that was very modern. That's incredibly contemporary language there. Um, so, and then I have these um, notebook notes. Quote, the first 17 years of crap in school obviously just can't be avoided if you don't have Nietzsche for a father. That's on page 192, not of the novel, but of this book, which contains not only the novel, The Sufferings of Prince Sternenhock, but Ladislav Klima's autobiography, starting on page 183. And he's talking about his childhood and his adolescence and going to school. The first 17 years of crap in school obviously just can't be avoided if you don't have Nietzsche for a father. He hated school. 
Um, there's a phrase that goes, um, my parents understood what my intimissimum needed. And I don't know what intimissimum means. He refers to his best friend, his very best friend, his drinking buddy, long-term, long, hard drinking buddy, as by the name of Franz Bohler, B-O-H-L-E-R. He also had a friend named Dr. Dvorak, or Dvorak. And uh, there was someone who's called Matthew the Honest. Don't know who these people are. Wish I did. He also has a phrase in the autobiography where it's a quote from Nietzsche, and it's, it's supposedly famous, but I don't understand the German. It says, Ich bin immer am Abgrund. Ich bin immer am Abgrund. Don't know what that means. He also uses a Latin phrase called sui accionis. O-C-C-I-S-I-O-N-I-S. Accessionis. Sui accessionis. Don't know what it means. Um, and he also says, as the pesus says, P-E-C-U-S. Pecus, pesus, P-E-C-U-S. As the pesus says, I don't know what that is, a pesus. He uses a German phrase called Umvertungen der Werte, which I don't know. Uh, Umvertungen der Werte. U-M-W-E-R-T-U-N-G-E-N. Umvertungen der, D-E-R, Werte. Uh, W-E-R-T-E. And in the autobiography, he talks about him being himself being a um, raw foods kind of guy, not quite a vegetarian, because he would eat mice, yes, mice, bones, fur, and all. And he just said this at one point, because he's bragging about how healthy he was before he died of tuberculosis. I would glug down both water from people with smallpox, and I just didn't want to finish the sentence. He would glug down water from people with smallpox. Oh, this is on page 196. And after all his bragging about the things that he would consume that would, most people would find disgusting, he would say, and I just have to contend with two days of diarrhea. Well, that's what I wanted to talk about in terms of um, Ladislav Klima. He was an eccentric individualist, and um, I liked him. 